Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. Um, in this one I'm kind of going to be doing a follow-up to another one I've done which was on like minimal house percussion um, which is this one um, the glitchy minimal like e park loops like trauma um, this one for those who haven't seen um, basically we took a drum kit from inside Ableton called the selector kit um, and used various LFO effects to um, kind of create wacky glitchy perk loops um, because essentially what a selector kit is if I, I've got one channel loaded up um, it's essentially a drum rack um, which has loads of different um, drum channels, so you kick, rim, snare, clap, all those different ones. Um, but inside each, basically it's a drum rack with an instrument rack with all these different types of drum sounds inside that. Um, so um, each instrument rack then has up to 127 different kick samples in this case um, inside that if I just play the perk um, the perk channel um, you can change it and it's got up to 127 different samples so this is quite useful if you've got like a set um, amount of samples that you typically refer to you can actually set up a selector kit, um, your own one, using your favorite samples for each type of sound. Um, so say you've got like 20 different kicks that you like and you want to improve your workflow. Um, you can set up kick selector channel um, and you can throw in 20 different kicks and that's all you'll look at kick wise and you'll do that in every project if you set it as a default. Um, so the idea of this is kind of like to improve your workflow a bit. Um, it's a bit tedious as a process to set up and um, going through all your favorite kicks, but it can seriously help in the long run. Um, just to have all your kicks there and ready in different chains. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate how to set up your own chain because there's not many in, there isn't many in Ableton. So where you'd start is with a drum rack. Um, and C1 is probably the first note you would use. Um, and then I, the drum rack has single notes. So it doesn't matter what note you're playing, but on that you want to load in a blank instrument rack for each and we'll call this kick we'll just call it kicks um and then in here you want to you're gonna want to drop in multiple samples which sets up all your chains um so i'm just gonna type in um the all results try and find some um one shots. Here's some. So if you're doing this, um, you'll probably want to spend some time. If you know what samples you like, you can just go straight ahead. But it, you might want to spend some time going through your libraries and picking out a few good ones. Um, because like myself, you probably have way too many drum samples. Um, so I'll just load in. The number doesn't really matter. Like I said, you have up to 127, um, up to 127 spaces. Um, so I've got 42 chains here. And what you're going to want to do is go to chain and you want, you want to select all of them drag them out like this um, and then right click distribute ranges equally 
So what this does um, is when you're selecting through the kicks, it means um, you've got an equal chance of, if you do this, yeah, I'll just go ahead and it'll make more sense. So you distribute ranges equally and map to macro one. And then if you look at this kind of bar as I move this, um, So because I've got roughly 50 samples, 0 to 2 will probably will be the first sample. And then when I move up, and obviously um, if you've got all 127 samples in there, it will change every time you move it to 1. Um, so what I would do then is pick selector like that. And then that's that one done. And what you could then do is map the kick selector tab like so. And boom, that's pretty much the basis of the idea. Um, and you could call this custom selector kit. Um, and you could, in theory, save this instrument rack as a default, so have do it individually, or you could, um, what you could do is do the process again for all the sounds and save it as one drum rack. Um, I don't think there's a better approach really than the other. So if I go for clap, um, claps. And I do the exact same. Same once you want to clap. There's a lot here. That's from like the East End Dubs pack. Pretty good pack. Um, then you want to go to Chain. Select all of them. I think there's about 30 odd samples in that one. Obviously you don't, you're not you probably won't need 127 samples. Be surprised if even the even someone bashing out loads of tracks gets through that many claps. Um, and then do the same thing, but map to macro. You can map it to macro one because it's a different um instrument rack. Map selector and. So you'll hear you'll hear what's happening now. Um, and it's basically allowing you to quickly addition um, quickly addition sounds in your drum beat. And you can have these on loads of different channels as well. Or like I'm doing, have it on one MIDI channel and be able to addition all your sounds on one chain. It depends how you set your drums up. I personally do individual sounds, but if you do all your drums on one rack, um, this would probably be the approach you'd go for. Oh, hang on, I've just undone my work. Uh, um, just to finish, we'll do a hat one. And you could probably do separate closed and open hats, but I'll not... I'll not prioritize for this example. One is horrible. Um, so yeah, we'll do that again. We'll chain. Like them all. It lets me. There we go. Um, distribute values equally. Map to macro one. 
and then I'll not bother renaming that for time. Um, at chain. So yeah, you can hear like. And then, um, so yeah, that's basically it. Something I'd probably recommend is spending a lot of time um, finding samples which are really good quality, which you really like and you always use. Um, if you wanted to go one step further, you could apply some EQ um, to the individual sounds. Um, not to clean them up um, or alter their ADSR individually um, because there's loads of different samples applying any processing here might be a bit of a dangerous game so I'd maybe want to always treat the sound individually individually um, if you're keeping the rack as is um, there's always the option of once you've settled on the samples, bouncing them out, the audio as well. There's plenty of options here, but essentially this provides you with a kind of like workflow template in which to choose your drum sounds and quickly get ideas down. Um, and then you can start getting creative as I showed in like the minimal house percussion tutorial that I mentioned at the start. So yeah, that's going to be it for this one. Um, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe um, if you found the video useful and for more videos. Um, comment as well anything that you'd like to see in the future so I can plan some tutorials. Um, and be sure to check out there are resources like sample packs and various like Ableton and racks from the website below as well and yeah i'll see you in the next one